Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Vengeance, Roll and Fight. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the Mean Streets of Vengeance, which is where players are going to be trying to right the wrongs that have been visited on them by evil crime bosses. And today, I am Johnny Silverhand, an old aging punk rocker who is trying to get revenge against Don Zemun. And Jen, my wife, or, hi, honey pie, hi. is playing Kaja, and she's trying to take down Il Bardne. And uh, we are going to do the best we can by rolling dice as fast as possible. This is a competitive game, and you win by doing the most damage to the evil criminal syndicates. Me, I'm going to have to try to break into this pool hall and find and take out Don Zimu. Jen's uh, trying to explore this luxury villa to try and find her quest. Okay, each player starts with uh, their own special weakness, which is a bit of a change. Johnny here, well, he is kind of old, so if he stands still too long, if, if, if I take out two or more enemies in the same room without moving on, I will take a wound, because he's just a little slow, so he's got to keep going. Kaja is also old, the old katana master, or mistress, I suppose. At the beginning of the first and fourth round, she's just going to take a wound, period. So, we are at the beginning of the first of four rounds, so Kaja, oh, Sorry, has already taken one of three hit points worth of damage. But Jen will take care of that. Me, I've got to keep moving or I take extra damage. Okay, Honey Pie, are you ready? Are we doing that first? Yes. The first thing we do in each of the four rounds is we basically do what the game currently calls preparation, but I like to call a flashback. Because I'm literally standing right here at the uh, pool hall. Jen's right there at the front door, and now's not time to do preparation. So I like to think of it in cinematic terms that we're having a flashback to you know the, the days or weeks leading up to this moment where we were training and preparing and, and doing recon and stuff like that. So we're going to do the first of four flashbacks before the action starts, and that means we roll these dice, and we have got a heart, which means either a little bit of healing or a little bit of leveling up, and then two of these, which either uh, count as training, the lightning bolt, or um, the brass knuckles count as purchases. So, each of us gets to use these dice to represent the preparation we were doing during this flashback sequence, and Jen has a choice. Because she's already taken one point of damage, a single heart can heal her, where is it, twice, or can level up her life meter one. And so she's not going to heal, she's going to, and I'm going to do the same thing because we both get that heart. So now we both have four hit points, although Jen's already been hurt for one. Now we can use the others however we want, either to earn experience. Every lightning bolt unlocks um, two pips of experience. Or if we take the brass knuckles, that means we can unlock one charge of our four items. I've got a stim pack, a pocket mirror, cover, and med pack. Jen's got running shoes, katana, bandages, and energy herbs. And by the way, as part of setup, Jen currently at the most could ever have two energy herbs. But when she was setting up, she could have said, oh, I'm gonna, I want to have a lot of potential energy herbs and only two running shoes. So uh, that's something to bear in mind as well. Everybody has access to this. And in addition to these three dice, we also get, uh, everybody gets either one additional heart, one recon, two more training, which counts as four experience points basically, or another purchase. And so everybody goes on ahead and does that. Um, let's see here. I My pocket mirror gives me um, uh, extra... Right, uh, yeah. Oh, do I want to do that? I, it gives me an extra hit or shot every time I complete an objective. And if I look here, I've got an objective I can complete in this room and this room, which means if I want to you know, use these brass knuckles to say, get two unlocks of my pocket mirror, that means I'm going to want to rush down here and complete that objective and that objective. And as a bonus, I'll be able to check myself out and uh, do extra damage. So I think I'll just take both of these instead of the experience. J and what are you doing, honey pie? Hi. Jen just got herself a whole bunch of experience. You just took experience, 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 and experience. Yep. All right. 
And then she's going to spend it all to unlock her jump attack, which costs four experience, and her sword katana, which costs four experience. So she's got all of these basic actions that all characters can do, plus she's got these ones as well. So she's got a lot more targets for rolling dice than I do. Because I'm just getting ready. Um, I'm setting myself up for the future, so I use those. And now I get one of these. I could still take the experience to get two, or I could do recon. What the heck? I'll go on ahead and get... All right, so two uh, means four. So I've got one, two, three, four. I didn't take the health or the purchase or the recon. So I took both of those purchases to get my pocket mirror charged up. And so with four, I've got a bunch of things to get as well. Although I might want to save up my most powerful move to see what sticks, which means I get to shoot, shoot, shoot. Just boom, boom, boom. Um, I need to have five total experience to be able to buy this. So I don't think I'm going to buy it at all. I'm just going to take the four experience, and probably next turn I'll get a couple more experience and then be able to buy that. All right, so we are done. The flashback is over. And I was thinking back to, i got to polish up my pocket mirror, and Jen was thinking about all the training she did to master her katanas and her jump attack. And that's over, and now the game begins. Each of us takes four dice, and in a two-player game, there, there's a total of 24 dice. So we've got 16 more dice here. And when somebody says go, we are going to start rolling these dice as fast as we can to try to match. Well, Jen's got um, six different things she could be matching. I'm trying to match these particular things. If I get two running men, I could go on ahead and assign it here. And that means I'll be able to do a move. I'll be able to do a dash. Now, as soon as I apply any of the dice to any of the actions, the same for Jen, I So if I did this, if I had two runs and I said, I'm going to prepare to dash, then I'm down to two dice. Whenever you're rolling, you should always have four dice available to you. So that means I would grab two more dice from the pool and keep rolling. So you want to get these actions queued up as fast as you can, because really what we're racing to do is snag as much dice as possible. If you spend a lot of time just rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling to try to get the perfect thing, other players might go for easier moves rather than more complex moves and grab all the dice before you have a chance. So we are racing as fast as we can. But there is one thing we have to worry about. And Jen was just pointing at me because I tend to be very quick and Jen gets very upset with me. Wow. Um, but it's, it's, it's her own fault. I've got nice, simple targets. She's got really complex <laughs> targets to try to go for. That's true. He's um, just very good. He's hand-eye coordinated. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, you're, you're jinxing me now. Oh. Now, the other problem is, while we're rolling, if we get this little blood symbol, which kind of stands for exhaustion, that die is locked. We can't use it to apply to any of our actions. And there's two ways we can unlock a locked die. Um, and as long as that's locked, I'm you know if I've got a locked one, I'm only rolling three dice at a time until I get that back. Now what I can do is, if I say, I, hey, I just two running men, if I uh, apply dice successfully to basically give myself any of these actions, that will unlock a die. So if, you know, say this is what I had rolled right off the bat, and I, before I'm even re-rolling, I'm saying, ah, I've got a locked die. Okay, I'll prepare to do a dash. Now that means, hey, I'm short two dice. I'll get these. And because I prepared an action, I get to unlock this die. And then I could leave this because, hey, I mean, this could be used for punching and for shooting and for charging. And then I could roll again. And I say, okay, well, let's see. I've got two knives. Um, if I could just get... Uh, and then I've got a running man. And, hey, I've got a gun. All four of these combined could be a charge. And now I've got a second thing, and then I quickly grab more dice. And then he swoops in and, and takes I, And more. just keep on taking them as fast as you can. Yep. This is the competitive nature of the game, uh, because you want to get as many dice as possible. Jen's got more complex things she's going for. I've just got the really simple ones, because... Okay, and um, I, I think that's about it. Are you ready, honey pie? Yes. Okay, then. And Jen's rolling in that, and I'm just rolling out in the open. And uh, wish me luck, folks. Or Jen, depending on who you're <laughs> rooting for. Here we go. All righty. Okay. And, all right, I just grabbed two more. And, da, da, da. all right, there's another move. And there's two, and I've grabbed two more. And let's see, there's a, ooh, there's three, and I'm just going to grab three more now. And there's a run, and I, all right, and, oh, boom, there's a charge. I'm going to grab four more now. And, okay, now. <laughs> well, because so, you've hogged all the dice, I think I get two of those. I don't think you do. I just did four, and I grabbed them. This is the competitive nature of the game. Now, what happens is, eventually, the pool's going to be gone, and then the racing stops. And players can now, at a more leisurely pace, finish your last few rolls or re-rolls, um, because there are no more dice to grab. So Jen's still got two. She hasn't assigned anywhere. I've got four. Them. And um, although really, I've just got three because I've locked one up. Now, 
And Jen's got two, and that's a problem for her because all... Well, I mean, you could potentially reroll these to get another move because you only need two dice for a move. Yeah, but I don't know where I want to go. Well, I might as well reroll them anyway because you're not going to do anything with them otherwise. Or... No, that's one time. Oh, and yeah, her jump attack, she's locked that in. It can only be used once. I would suggest rerolling because there's... I mean, you might, after you decide, because this is the real-time portion, then there's the strategic portion of how we actually use all these actions. So, but you're not even going to try and get a move. And so she's got one, and there. So you're using all your dice successfully. Hooray! Meanwhile, me, I, I can now continue, and I can be a little more leisurely about it. I've got a gun, I've got... And, and unfortunately, here's the problem. If I assign all three of these to something, then this will be unlocked, but it's just a single, and I don't have any actions to use a single. Now, there's another thing. Let's just say I had rolled two, or let's say I had really bad luck and rolled three, and you think, oh, I'm doomed, right? There's nothing I can do, because with a single, I can't apply this anywhere, so I can't unlock these. You either unlock them um, by completing actions, or you can take, if you have a bunch of them that are locked up like this, you can take one of them and put it on your health meter. And that means you're pushing yourself past your exhaustion point, which means you're going to take a point of damage, but that means you get to unlock all the other wounds, and then you can keep rolling with them. Now, that's not what I actually rolled on this last one. You did have one. Um, I did have one, and I've still got it. So I've got two feet. If I want to just move some more, I've got a double blade. Um, I think I've already got two moves, and I've got another move with this charge. So I think I would like to either get another punch... Or I'd like to get some shooting, if I can. So I'm just going to re-roll... Those two. Well, I need, I... well, the thing is, to get a shot, I need two guns and either a gun or a knife. So... We've well, already got the knife. Yeah, but um, if I roll all three, I'm upping... I mean, the knife doesn't do me any good unless I get some guns as well. And I mean, if I get three guns. So I... Yeah. All right. And the thing is, every time I re-roll, and this is something you normally worry about in the real-time portion, I'm potentially locking up more dice. So if I do roll three dice, I up my chances. Because the way these dice are laid out, there's one lock, there are two feet, and then a single knife, a double knife, and a gun. So yeah, I think it is probably more dangerous. I don't want to get things locked up. So let's just see if I can roll some guns. And wow, I wow. just did. So I go on ahead and do that. Because I've just filled in, this is unlocked again, so I could use it. Woo. But it doesn't matter what it is, because I don't have any single actions I can do. And so that's it. So all the dice got used, except for one. And now we move on to the actual action portion. And how, ultimately, how many did I end up getting? I had 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, versus your 10, I guess? Yep. Yep. So, I've nine. got... Well, and we'll see how well no, that works out. I only got 9. You got, got 9. Oh, got because 15. there's... Because I actually had 15. Sorry about that, honey pie. Um, now, it's interesting. Uh, you know, this is a very competitive, in-your-face way to draft dice. And players who are just quicker, um, you know, I mean, or players maybe who don't have as many complex combos they're trying to make, have a little bit of advantage over other players. I'll talk a bit more about that in the final thoughts, but for now, we move on to the third and final stage of each of each round is we actually use these dice to move around. And now, honey, are you going to stick around and actually do a full round? Yeah, I'll just Alright, well then, what you got? What are you going to do? You have two opportunities okay. to dash, well, you've got one opportunity to shoot, yep. and you've got your jump attack, which is a move, hit, hit. Well, remind me, the green guys take two hits? Yes. Here's a little summary. B um, the black icons, these are grunts. They don't have any function other than if there are any grunts in the boss room, you can't fight the boss until the grunts are taken out. The red ones are dangerous because at the end of the round, if there's any red ones in the room with you, you will take a point of damage. The blue ones are even more dangerous. They're the most dangerous thing. They're gunmen. If there's any blue um, uh, minions, henchmen, thugs, in the room you're in, or in an adjacent room, after you're done with all your movement, you'll take damage. Green ones are tough guys. You have to do two points of damage to take them out. And then yellow ones are blockers. If you're in a room with the yellow, you cannot leave the yellow room until you've taken out the blocker. So, if we zoom in on Jen's uh, <coughs> board over here, she is starting up out here in the alley. If she moves over here into this room, there's a blocker, so she won't be able to move out of the room until she uh, you know, takes them out. Okay. So, what are you thinking about doing, honey? I'm going to start with my jump attack, which is a move, hit, hit. Move, hit, hit. Do it. Move. Move, hit, hit. Easy peasy. All right, so, I mean, these guys didn't know what hit him, and she also marks out that she's been in this room. 
All right, because there are sometimes objectives that want you to keep track of which rooms you've been in. All right, so she's done with that. She okay. still has two more moves and a gunshot. Right. So what are you going to do next? So I'm now going to move into here. All right. Now, she can shoot, but the problem is you cannot shoot anybody in the room that you're in. You can only shoot into adjacent rooms. You know what? I, sorry, I totally thought I was doing that, but I'm not. Oh, so. Jen thought she was getting setting up for her super katana yeah, move, which she that. did not do. Okay, so never mind. So I'm going to move over here instead. So she's moving over here to the fountain. And, um, well, I don't know what... All right, so that you can shoot into this room? Yeah. Okay, so she's made one move. So... And she's using her one opportunity to shoot. And she took out the gunman in this room so that he will not shoot back at her. And then you've got one more move. Right. And I don't... And there's nobody blocking you here. So you could leave and move on and go deeper into the mansion to try to get to the boss. Yep. Okay. And so that was her final move. So she she did her whatever it was, your katana charge. She jumped in here, took out a couple of guys, and then rushed over here, shot into the next room, and then um, you know, set up. And now... At the end of her turn, at the end of the round, she looks around, there's one red in this room. So you are going to take one point of damage, but there's no shooters in this room or adjacent rooms. So Jen will take one point of damage. Remember, she's got four hit points, so she's okay. And one heart will clear both of those out. And she is done. Now, here's what she's missed. If she had taken out everybody in this room... Um, oh, by the way, you need to mark you're in that room. If she takes out everybody in this room, she'll get the loot of this room, which we can either turn into points by increasing our prestige meter, or you can convert it into healing, um, experience points, purchases, or recon as well. But she just ran through that room because we only have four rounds. And, you know, there are other objectives. If Jen makes it up here and takes out all four of the people in this room in one round, she'll get four points. Uh, um, but if she makes it up into this room, this is where she's come to actually beat El Bardic. And, you know, and that could get her, like, what? I mean, he has seven hit points, yeah. so that could get her eight plus five points if she actually takes out the boss. So, that was it for her. That was a, a decent first round, especially considering I stole all the dice. You stealer. And now let's see what I am going to pull off. And, um, so... Jen promised she would give me one round, and then she was going to go back upstairs and continue making glass. So, are you out, Bill, honey pie? I, I think that's everything you need from me. Yep, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, you know, because really, I just want Jen here to show you the function of what it's like playing against another player, snagging all the dice as fast as you can. I'm going to finish this round, and then I'll finish this full game. I'll continue to play as Johnny Silverhand here, but I'll switch over to the solo mode to show you how that works. Okay. So, thanks very much, honey pie. You're welcome. All right, everybody bye. say bye to Jen. Bye. 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 Okay, so let's take a looksville at what I've got going on. I'm starting up here in the alley. I've already visited this room, and I've got one opportunity to shoot. I've got one opportunity to charge, which is move and then hit, which means I take out somebody in the room I'm in as opposed to an adjacent room, which is what shooting is. And then I've got a punch I can do, and I've got two opportunities to move. So, let's start out my action-packed adventure by using one of my dashes, which is a move. So, I'll just move over here. And now I'm in a room with two, uh, what do you call them? Two grunts and a uh, tough guy. So, um, I don't have to fight any of these guys. There's no blockers, so I could just keep on running. I've got another run, and I've got a charge, which lets me move as well. But I'm thinking ahead. If I look over here, I have this objective, which is I will get six points if I take out all of the blockers and all of the tough guys, and I get into this room. If I'm in this room with all the green and yellow guys taken out, I'll get six points. And remember, I invested in my pocket mirror, which says after I score an objective, I get another hit or another shot for free. So it makes sense for me to try to complete both of these objectives. Um, and so... One of the objectives is getting... So I'm going to use this punch to, t to do... Now, normally, a punch does one point of damage. And most all of the bad guys have just one hit point. The tough guys are the exception. They have two hit points, and to take them out, you have to do two points of damage in one round. So you think, oh, I'm just going to punch them once. But if you look closely, it says that when you punch, you get to do a hit. 
but it's a double hit if one or more of the knives or the machetes is a double. And so this is actually a double hit, doing two points of damage to take out that tough guy. And normally I would have completely ignored that tough guy, except I'm trying to get over here into this area of the approval hall so I can unlock that bonus. So that was a move. Now, let's go on ahead and use my charge. And my charge says move and hit. So now I'm going to move, and I have to do these in order. I couldn't do hit and then move. So I'm going to move in here, and now I'm going to do a hit. I'm going to take out one of these, oh, the henchmen. Boom, boom. So that was the move and a hit. Because if you look over here, there's another objective. If I will get six points if I take out three henchmen, and here they all are, right in this room. So, if I take out all three of these henchmen and get over to this room, I'll score six points. So, I've just taken out one of the two. Unfortunately, I have no more punches, so I can't hit another one. But I do have my shot, which requires two guns and either another gun or a knife. And I had uh, you know, two guns and a knife. So, I'm going to shoot. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do... Let's see. There's a gunman down here. If I don't take him out and I stay in this room, he will hurt me at the end of the round. You saw how Jen got hurt. But I do have another move. So where am I going to go? I do want to come down in these rooms. So I'm just going to shoot ahead. Kerblam! And I took him out, and now I'm going to use this last move, and I make it down here. So I left the, you know, I, So if you imagine cinematically what I did is I rushed in, you know, just bull rushed this guy, took him out, smashed this guy into the ground, took a quick shot off the hip, and then kept on running while these ones were like, what the heck happened? Who's this old guy with the mohawk? And um, that was my first round. And now I have to check, am I going to take any damage? There's no gunman in the room I'm in or in adjacent rooms. And there's no, uh, what do you call it, the henchmen, no red ones in the room I'm in, so I don't take any damage. And that that was the end of the first round for me. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. I should have made note that I have entered that room, and I have entered that room, and I have entered that room. Sometimes there's objectives or special powers that care about whether you've been in a room or not. Like, um, actually, I've got one of them. Uh, I've got this, huh? It basically, if I had this power, which I could have bought, it would have cost me three experience points. This says, the fourth time I take out a bad guy in a room that I haven't been in yet, I get another experience and another purchase. And this would be forever. So, um, you know, if I had this power, I'd be trying to take out everybody from a distance by shooting before I move into the room so that I could unlock bonuses. And as I don't have that power, but I'm still just marking that I've been in these rooms. I still need to take out these two reds before I come in here so I can get those six points. Um, right. But, you know, before I move into this room on the next round, my intention is to shoot back and take both of them out, then move in here and get the experience, and then get an extra kill because I've unlocked my pocket mirror. So anyway, that was the first round for me. And now, if you just give me a second, I'm going to go on ahead and zoom in uh, and on my stuff and then continue to play solo mode so you can see what that's like. So, just give me a mode to rearrange stuff. And now we're back, and Johnny Silverhand is going to continue his quest for vengeance solo. Okay, now the game works pretty much exactly the same as what you just saw. The only difference is going to come during the real-time drafting. You will notice I now only have a total pool of 12 dice available to me. And when I start rolling, it'll be the same. I've got four at a time, and when I, when I lock them in, I'll be able to give myself more dice. It's just I cannot take more than 12. And you'll also notice I got my smartphone out, because instead of racing against another human player, I'll race against a timer. I've got 30 seconds. Now, this is me playing on hard. If I were playing on medium, I'd have a total pool of 16 dice, and I would still have 30 seconds. And if you play on um, easy, you get a pool of 20 dice, and you get 45 seconds. Now, remember, everything you're seeing here today is prototypes. So, uh, you know, things might change here or there as they tweak and balance and adjust. If you want, you can hit that uh, eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go check out the Kickstarter page to see if there's been any changes or tweaks to the rules. But this is still just giving you a core idea. So, we're on to round two. And once again, it's time for a flashback. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm right in the middle of the action. There's a brief moment right before I'm thinking, oh, these two guys are coming at me. And, and then that reminds me, how did I get here? And we have another flashback in the middle of the action. So, uh, once again, we're going to do uh, the prepare actions. We get to do four of them. Three from the dice, plus one of the preset ones. And let's see. Oh, I rolled almost the exact same thing. I was hoping to show you guys something else. Maybe we'll get that in the third round. But anyway, I've got another one of these where I can take the training or I could take the purchase to give myself more items. Now, I, you know what? 
If I'd been paying attention, I would have noticed there are only two objectives on this map. There is no reason to have the pocket mirror in the three slot. I should have put the pocket mirror over here. And um, I probably would have uh, put the uh, evade. I would have had more evades. And so let's just say, um, again, this would have made more sense. I've still got my two pocket mirrors set up, ready to use whenever I need them, which is going to be after I score objectives. And um, now I've got two more purchases. I could give myself two med packs or a cover action and a stim. I mean, I could do all kinds of stuff here. Or I could take these as experience. Remember, I still have four experience I did not spend from last round. So I'll go on ahead and take one of these two dice as experience. Remember, every lightning bolt is two XP. All righty. And so that's that die. And so this other one, I could give myself some more XP. Or, you know what? It's good to just have movement in the back. You know, I, I'm, just in case I can't quite roll what I need, always good to be able to just get an extra move if I need to go. So I'll have that in my back pocket from this. And now this is Recon. And um, what it does is it lets me pre-select one of my abilities that I want to use. And it means I can guarantee use that ability. Even if I fail at rolling what I want to roll, I could still guarantee that I'll be able to do a dash or a punch or a fire or a charge or one of my other actions. Let's go on ahead and buy... I talked about this before. One, two, three, four, five. I am buying my most valuable uh, action see what sticks, which is just pow, 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 just three shots. And interestingly, I pay for this with damage tokens. So here's another way. If I do get a locked up die, I, it's not the end of the world because I can use it to see what sticks. So this is my... And I've still got one more I could spend. Um, and... Now, here's the interesting thing. So I've got this recon. This recon is... Uh, if you look a bit more closely, you will notice that there are single chevrons on this. My charge has a double chevron. And... My see what sticks has a double chevron. So that means if I want to lock in the fact that I will guaranteed get to do one of these actions no matter what I roll, then I need to spend this single so I could have a guaranteed move, a guaranteed punch, a guaranteed fire, or if I spend this plus this one, because remember, I also get one of these down here, then I could combine the two to say, have a guaranteed see what sticks. And I won't have to worry about trying to get the dice to do this. I could focus all the dice up here. Now, there is one consideration, though. If I use Recon to say, lock in what I want to do, that means... Um, this is guaranteed going to happen during the action phase, and I cannot spend dice on this. Even if I get the dice to be able to do this a second time, I won't be able to. But and you know, and this is the one where it's just nice. It's just it's you know one of each weapon. So I don't think I'm going to lock that in. But I am going to use the two recons to lock in a charge. So I guaranteed have one move plus a hit. And I need to be thinking, uh, basically, about what do I want to do. I could be planning out. Now, I want to, before I move on here, I want to shoot back from where I came, take out both of these reds, because then when I move in here, I will complete this objective and score six points. Right. So that means I'm going to need two shots. And remember, see what sticks gives me three shots. And um, so I could shoot, shoot, and then I could also shoot the uh, blocker who's in here before I even move into the room. And then... I have a guaranteed charge. A guaranteed charge will let me move in, and that would do one of the two damage I need for this tough guy. Uh, and remember, I do want to take out all the tough guys, because I'm ultimately trying to get to this objective over there. So, um, is that what I'm going for? So I've got a, I've got a move. That's going to get me in here. That's going to give me one of the two hits I need. Hmm. Interesting. Now, although, remember... Uh, I took one of these as experience, I took one of these as another move. So I have another guaranteed move. Do I need this move then? Because I've got the stims move that will get me in here. But you know what, I mean, I've only got four rounds. If I can, I'd like to complete both of these objectives and take out the boss. But I've got to go one, two, three, four more rooms. I've got one move locked here. I've got one move locked here. I could get more moves if I need to. So my overall round is going to be, you know, get my see what sticks, shoot, 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 Maybe just move with the regular move. Um, and with if I get a double big punch, I'll be able to take out green. And then I can use my uh, guaranteed charge to charge into the next room and get a hit 
before because hey if i if you know here's a blue who's going to be trying to take me out now here's another thing i need to consider if i'm coming in here you can see as i, I could go into this room or this room this is a dead end but it might be worth coming here because I just realized there's a third objective on this map. I didn't look closely enough. The objective for this room is I will score three points if I come into this room after I have done damage to the boss, to Don Zeman. And now that's going to be tricky. If I, say, had come around like this, come in and just taken the quick turn, gone right to the boss room, and you know, fought him and maybe took him out, then I'd have a reason to come all the way down here and um, get the three points. But I do need to think about this because in the competitive game, you win by scoring the most points. You score points predominantly by completing objectives, fighting the boss, and also by earning a lot of prestige and a lot of training. Those are the main ways you can score points. Uh, but in the solo game, I actually have an objective to complete. I will lose, no matter how well I do, unless I have done one of two things. I have um, taken out the boss, and I believe it's half of all of his minions. Yeah, yeah, it's the boss, and at least half of all the minions are crossed out. Or instead, I don't have to take out the boss to get a win. I have to collect every bit of loot. And looking around, I've got one, two, three, four. Is that it? Are there four loot? Or five? There's one loot here as well. Now, I haven't talked about this much yet, but to complete loot, you have to have at some point visited the room. You don't have to be in the room at the moment. And you have to take out all the bad guys in the room. So you'll notice, I've already been in this room. I didn't get the loot. But if I shoot back here and take out these two guys, I'll get the loot at that point. And then I can move on and still shoot back here and take out these guys and get that loot. So if I'm going to try to get the win where I've gotten all five loot, I do need to come down here and take out these three dudes. Alternatively, I've got to take out half of them and get to the boss. And... I don't think I don't have time to do both. And so that's a real question I have to ask myself. Am I going to come in here, come back around here, and then come up there and and you know and get the win by getting, you know, taking out all of these guys, all of these guys, all of these guys, and all of these guys. Is that it? There's one. Oh, and this room as well. So I've got to take out all of them, all of them, all of them, and all of them to get all the loot? Or am I just going to be trying to get these experience points and make it up to the boss and take the boss out? Because if I do that, I will have taken out um, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, probably 10. And... Uh... Oh, I just realized something else, folks. To get this, I mean, the loot, you do not have to, you just have to have been in the room at some point and take out all the guys you get the loot. The objectives, you have to be in the room when this happens. So I've got a problem. To get this objective, I gotta make it all the way up here, take out this blocker, and then come back down here. There's actually a fair bit of thinking. Now, this was, remember, I made my plan originally when I was playing a multiplayer, and I was trying to figure out how am I gonna score the most points possible. I mean, all I have to do to take out this guy is just come up here, shoot him, and come back. Now, that's if I were just trying to go for points. If I were trying to go for points, I'd be trying to get both of these, so that's 12 points, and then probably just get a lot more training and prestige. And the way you get prestige is by getting the loot. But now that I've got to either get all the loot or the boss, I think it does make more sense for me to make sure I get that loot, that loot, and that loot, and maybe never go for the boss at all. So I think I'm going to have to pull an audible because I've switched from a competitive game to a solo game. Anyway, though, so all of this is stuff that I'm considering while deciding how am I spending my uh, preparation, my flashback points here. Which is why I've also got to take into account the boss himself. Now, if I'm going to try and make it to beat this boss, plus half of all the minions, to get the solo win, every boss has a unique thing about them. Don Zeman here is that every tough guy in the den has to be taken out before you can land a hit on Don Zeman. I guess that's because they're body doubles. So until I've taken out this green and this green and this green, I can't be sure that this is the real Don Zeman. And so I've already taken out one. I'm going to take out this one, and I'd have to take out this one. Now, I was already thinking about taking them all so that I can complete this objective. Uh, but remember, these are all the ones that have two hit points, so they're a bit tougher to take out than normal. But the Dawn himself, he's only got four hit points. Although really, he effectively has one more hit point, because remember, the Grunts, and there is one Grunt in the boss room, basically, I cannot hit the Dawn or any boss until I've taken that. So Dawn, Dawn's even basically has five hit points, but I can't even attack him until I take out this green and this green. So that's a lot. I think all things combined... 
I'm going to try and go for the solo win of getting all the loot rather than beating the boss, which again, was not my original plan. And what that means is, rather than having bought this move, I might have wanted to buy a cover instead. Cover basically, or in this case, my cover says, hey, when I activate it, I get to do an evade. Um, although, oh shoot, it's only evading blues. Because um, I was going to say, evade is an action that can temporarily take a bad guy offline. You act as if they're not there, and then the next round they're there again. You like stun them. And I was thinking, if I could evade these blockers, it'd be great just to skip right past them and not have to spend the time and effort and dice to take them out to keep moving. But this is only for evading blues. So no, 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 I'll stick with the extra movement I need. Because now I've got two moves locked in. So that's going to let me get here and then over here so I can start taking these out because then ultimately I'm going to have to come back around this way and up here as I do this loop to get all of the loot. Right, so I think that's fine. Using the two recons, I've given myself a guaranteed charge. And this was a tough thing to do. It takes four dice. And because I'm not focusing on this now, because I can't, because I've already given myself one guaranteed charge, I can hopefully, I mean, heck, if I, uh, I, I can hopefully uh, at least do see what sticks twice. If I can roll the right dice, that'll be six shots. And then I've got the movement I need to take out a whole bunch of bad guys. Because remember, to get this loot, I got to take out all the bad guys. So I think that's it. I gave myself one training, and I gave myself one move, and I gave myself um, the two recon, which unlocked the charge. And now, honestly, I'm kind of regretting the pocket mirror. But still, it does help because if I complete these objectives, that's an extra kill I get. And I'm just trying to get as many kills as I can, as quick as I can, to get all the loot. So I think that's fine. All right then, we are done. The flashback is over. So as you can see, folks, there's a surprising amount to think about here as you strategize. Now, of course, um, you know, strategy will, um, you know, is great up until the moment you meet the dice and you start rolling, and then maybe all strategy goes out the window because the dice to give you decide to give you something you were not looking for. So we'll see how that goes. But I think I am ready for my round two uh, dice chucking. And remember now, I'm racing against the clock. I have a fixed 12. But if, if 30 seconds run out before I've been able to lay hands on all these dice, then I will have wasted some. So I still need to be fast. Um, so wish me luck. All right, what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get, I'm literally trying to get wounds plus a gun and a knife and a run. I want to be able to do this twice because that'll be one, two, um, you know, maybe three, four, and I move in here. I take out the ones here because I need to take out these guys. And then, you know, I can shoot on I me. Mean, I'd like to do this twice. I've got two moves. Yeah, if I could pull off this twice and then, I don't know, get another shot or another punch or another dash, I'd be pretty happy. So, let's go. Um, action! Alrighty. And there's the move and the boom, boom. So, and what else do I... Oh, I need a, a hit? Okay, so I'm just gonna... All right, but, oh, but I, oh, but I'm gonna pause for a second. Now that Jen's not here, I can pause and talk about a little strategy. Here's my problem. I can't get any more dice until I assign these dice somewhere. I've got three of the four dice I need, but until I actually lock them in, I can't get any more dice. I have 22 seconds left. So here's the funky thing. This is kind of nice. I can actually pause and explain the stuff that you'd have to be you know, making split-second decisions. I'm going to re-roll this like crazy until I can get the wound that I need to do this. And then once I've done that, I'll be able to grab four more dice. So that's uh, my strategy. Again, you don't get to pause the timer and think about these things. I just needed to pause so I could explain. Because I'm about to do something that looks a little crazy. I'm going to try and get myself hurt. All right. Action! Roll, roll. There we go. Boom. Got it. Okay. So that's it. I get four more dice. Continuing on. And all right, there's a punch. And all right, just re-roll these. All right. And oh, there's right, a knife. And give me a, or give me a, another punch. All right. All right. I'm going to pause for a second again. This is just a little thing. I have a double knife and it a single knife. A double knife can count as a single knife. All right. And so now I've got a problem. I'm down to nine seconds. I could keep on rolling this again so I can get another one of these, and that's what I really want to do. But what if I run out of time and don't get any more dice? Um, I'm going to take the risk. Uh, wish me the best. I just need... I mean, it's a one in six chance. If I can just roll fast enough, I should be able to do it. Because remember, once I get all these in, I'll get four more dice, I'll grab them all. And this is like the way it works in multiplayer, that once all the dice from the pool have been grabbed, the timer effectively is meaningless. And then you can take your time and think about those last few precision shots you're trying to get off. So, nine seconds left. I need to get that extra damage. Go. Alrighty, no. No. 
No, don't roll so fast. Ah, no, no, no. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Ah, no, come on. Boom. Ah, all right, and I got it. And I'm going to say I did make it over there in time. You can stop now. That's okay. Stop, stop. All right, so I, I did get it. Now, I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch. I think I did hear beep, 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 beep before I was able to lay hands on those last four dice. But on the other hand, I'm having to pause and I'm having to do extra steps. I mean, I was like only a half a second delayed. So I'm going to say I had that extra half second. Really, it's just for you folks so that I can demonstrate more stuff. So I was able to lay hand on the last little bit of dice. And so now the timer doesn't matter. Let's roll them. And so I know I've got two goes at this. That is six points of rapid fire damage I am doing. I've already got two moves locked in. Um, let's see. I'm going to move, move. I don't think I need another move. It would be nice to get over here. Um, but let's see here. I do have a tough guy. So here, if I remember, and uh, with the punch, if you have three knives and w at least one of them is a double, that's a two hit points. So that could take out the tough guy. So let's say I'm just going to try and roll another knife. I couldn't roll another knife. And there we go. There's another knife. So we'll say I'm going for this punch. So that's a double punch so I can take out him. And now I'm down to one die. It doesn't do me any good. And because I'm playing hard, there was no more. Now, remember, if I were playing easy, there would have been a pool of 20 dice and 45 seconds. So I could have grabbed a bunch of stuff. But as it is, I didn't end up getting that. And now the, uh, uh, the roll phase is over. The action phase begins. And let's do it to it. So first of all, let's... I've kind of moved these right. So let's go on ahead and do boop, boop, boop. All right, so I'll spend these to see what sticks. And I didn't actually take that damage. All righty. And three hits. Boom, boom. And I can't shoot in the room I'm in. So boom, or no, boom, took out the blocker. So that was my first see what sticks. And I've just gotten this prestige. Although, strictly speaking, not yet, because you don't resolve these until the end. At the end of the round, one of the last things you do is check to see, hey, did you clear any, have you been to any rooms where you cleared all the bad guys? So, that was my first see what sticks. Now, let's go on ahead and use my stims. So, I've still, I could unlock and get three more stims. That's a free move to come in here. And then, I'll use my super punch to take out the tough guy. Ha ha! All righty. And, hey, while I'm here, I can make note that I did score six points because all the reds have been taken out and I'm in this room. And remember, I my pocket mirror says that whenever I complete an objective, I can get a freebie shot off. So, let's go on ahead and take the shot and take out this um, blocker, because they're just annoying, in the next room. And, right, so that was that. Now, let's go on ahead and um, do... Ooh, 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 ooh. Err. Err. Right, so here's the thing. Okay, no. Let's go on ahead and do the other. See what sticks. Pow, pow, pow. I am going to shoot twice into this room and go... Uh, and, you know, so the two hit points took out that tough guy. And then I'm going to shoot out one of... Oh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. I forgot. I got to shoot back where I came from. So pow, pow, pow. Boom, boom. And so the, both of these rooms I've gotten... I will be able to collect the loot at the end of the round. So that's one, two. I need three more. Or one more. Um, right, let's just go on ahead and take out one of these guys that's in this room. So that was it. Now, remember, I've got my charge that I already bought. So that's a move and hit, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to move, and I'm going to take out one more. Okay, and so I've been in this room now. I've been in this room now. Phew! Okay, so I opened fire most aggressively and just took out a whole bunch of bad guys. Oh, now still, in the third round, i got to come back around this way and get up here. But we have finished round two. See what stuck. Really stuck very well. I got that extra hit with the pocket mirror. And now, at the end of the round, if there were any of these actions that I had pre-bought with Recon, and I didn't use them, you use them or you lose them. So, you don't get to keep them. But fortunately, I did use them all. Now I check. Did I? I did this. I got that loot. And I got that loot. There's no loot in here. I haven't filled out... I haven't taken out one last guy in there. So, for every loot you get, you have a choice. You can either take it as prestige, and the higher you go, the more points you get. Now, I'm playing solo. 
So I don't need to worry about victory points. Although, you, if you win, you can still like kind of try to beat high scores and stuff like that. The game will come with like a score sheet to see how well you did. So I could be going for score. But as it says right here, Prestige can either earn you more and more points, or you can use it for a heal, a recon, training, or another buy. And I just got two Prestige. So how am I going to take them? I could buy a couple more guaranteed locked-in moves. I don't really need the Evade of Blues, because I mean, I, I, I'm doing fine. I haven't taken any damage yet, so I don't think I need the heals. I can't buy any more Pocket Mirrors. But remember, I could take Training. That's four Training. Let's go on ahead and do that. One, two, three, four. I now have five more experience points that I can use to buy other abilities. Each player has access to eight abilities, although over the course of the game, you can only buy up to four of them. So um, I'll probably be able to buy another action I can get. Right, so that was that. Very nice. And we move on to round three. And so, I'm here in this room. I've just taken, you know, this uh, looks like a craps table or something. No, it's a poker table. And um, this guy said, No, man, please, I'm, I'm just a grunt. Don't, you know. And what do you bet? That gives me another flashback. Time for another flashback. So, let's see what else I remember in the days and weeks before this blood-soaked night. Alrighty. So, oh, I got a prestige and a heal. And, again, I keep rolling this one, the um, training or purchasing. So, okay, well, first of all, the heal, I still haven't taken any damage. Uh, each heart will heal me by one, or heal me by two, or give me one upgrade. So I've just gotten another upgrade. I have five hit points, and I still haven't taken any damage yet. Johnny uh, Silverhand still got it. Alrighty, so I can take more training, or I can buy... <laughs> Do I want the moves? So now, I know that I'm going to have to move one, two, three more times. And over the next two rounds, in rounds three and four, if I can just move three times, I'll have made it to all the rooms I need to get to. Um, so, I mean, I could just... Uh, you know, take this as another a guaranteed move, so I, that's one less thing I have to worry about, and I can focus my dice on actually shooting. But remember, I've got a whole bunch more experience, and I could give myself two more experience with this as well. And heck, I could give myself two more as well. And also, I might have forgotten this. Don't forget I get all these as well. Yeah, so I could get I could get a ton more. That'd be one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight. I could get eight more experience. Get so much that I'd actually be scoring points at the end of the game. Not that I care about points necessarily, although again, you could go for high scores and all of that. So, maybe I want to buy another um, special power or two. Right, so what have I got here? I've got Unlikely Shot, which uh, basically lets me shoot. Uh, you know, I need two guns to do this. I can only do this one once per round, and it lets me shoot into three different rooms. I'm going ahead. Actually, let's just get these a little bit closer. In fact, I'll put them all here so you can see all of the different upgrade options I've got with all of the sizable amount of training that I could potentially have on hand. So, what should I invest in? It, again, in my flashback, as I think back to all the training I did for tonight. And so as you can see, uh, good old Johnny here is definitely ranged combat focused. And each of the four characters that comes to the game are radically different. The Kaja, the character you saw Jen playing, she has two, two katanas, so she runs around like a ninja. And then you have two other characters, uh, uh, Shadow Man here, who looks like, uh, you know, this is terrible. Every time um, you try to shoot certain types, you end up evading them, and that sounds like a really terrible weakness. Remember, all the characters have a weakness, but Shadow Man's powers are all about being able to, like, do mass super moves to take out tons of people that are evaded. So he's a really interesting character because he's, like, just bouncing around and, um, you know, just stunning everybody all the time, and then doing big super killing blows that take out a whole bunch, uh, you know, because it says, take out everybody who's evaded, or take out two things that are evaded when you first enter, you know, all kinds of cool moves like that. And the other character, Little Goodrun, is an interesting one. She's got a really wide variety of things she can do, but probably her signature move, where is it, is the headbutt. And you have to um, you know, roll double damage for that. Um, or And um, you know, when you do it, you will get hurt. But then you'll shoot, hit, hit. And so that might sound really terrible, but she's got lots of ways to actually use her wounds to her advantage. So like I said, all four characters really have unique feels. And Johnny here is all about the shoot, shoot, bang, bang. He's very John Wicky that way. So... 
I think I like rabbit's feet. I think, oh yeah, if, I, if I'm all about moving, let's go on ahead and buy rabbit's feet. That costs four. And you'll know this is just a passive ability. I don't, I don't need dice for it. So there goes one, two, three, four. So I've still got one more experience point. And so this says, normally when you charge, first you have to move and then you have to hit. But with rabbit's feet, I can hit and then move. Um, so I can change things around. And, uh, right. That is very, very handy because I'm thinking about charging out of this room. And then, but when I come into this room, there's nobody to hit. So, if I, because of Rabbit's Feet, if I get a charge, first, I can go on ahead and uh, punch first and then leave. And to do that, let's see. So I still haven't decided what this. I'm going to combine both of these and give myself another guaranteed charge. And so right off the bat, before I, you know, I activate anything else, I am going to charge. I have that locked in. I'll punch the guy, thanks to the rabbit's feet. I'll move here. Um, and then having done that, this room will be emptied out, and I will have gotten that loot. Then i got to travel up here. And I could shoot my way in first... Or I could move first, and then, you know, um, because the blocker's already done, and then move and then shoot back, because... Right. And that's it, right? Um, because I, or I used those two. So I still got this, which, again, could be a loot, or it could be... You know what? Let's go on ahead and just unlock another move. So I've just got a guaranteed move, so I don't have to worry about dashes, so that my dice can go towards attacks, because I've got these passive things. Um, I've got this guaranteed charge, I've got this. That's going to be one, two. If I get one more to get in the last room, that would be great. Right, but I think that's it. I know what's going on. And folks, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I might have gotten myself a little bit confused here about what I was buying, but if I recall correctly, I used the, you know, that plus that, to get the charge. I use this as another, and... Um, or wait, no, did I use this to get more experience? I think I did. Oh, I don't remember now. But you know what? If I got it a little bit mixed up, you'll forgive me. This is really just to give you an idea. And always have the Klingon subtitles turned on. Paula would have pointed up when I went astray. So anyway, it is time to start rolling, rolling, rolling again. Again, I've got 30 seconds. I know I want to get one of each of the basics. Uh, and I'd like to do this twice. I've got the one-two move I need, which means I could shoot the rest here, and then all I gotta do is just move in here. Uh, so I'd like to get this done twice. I've got the... And so maybe just one more dash and a punch or something like that. And that's provided I don't cheat this time. Because remember, I've got 30 seconds, and going for this is tough, trying to get all four dice. But I think I can pull it off. Uh, um, let's see. Here we go. Boom. Alrighty, bip bop. And I need to reroll you guys. And there's the punch. And now I just need a gun. I need a gun. All right. Oh, I got That was lucky. Hold on a second. I'm going to pause. That was really dangerous. Um, because if I'd started rolling like crazy, and instead of getting the gun I needed, um, you know, there was only a one in six chance. I could have just as likely gotten this. Then I'm stuck. Because I um, these two won't combined won't get me anything so that I can clear out. And what I would have to do... Uh, is actually take this and um, accept a point of damage so I could clear my other locks, and then I'd be able to get another die because I'd be back to rolling dice. Now, as it is, I got crazy lucky there. I'm really pushing my luck a little bit, but let's go on ahead and continue. Boom. And then I got four more. One, two, three, four. And all right, there's a run and a knife. I'm just trying to get it again. There's a gun, and I need a punch. And now, I, now I can't. All right, boom. So I've got my second hit. Now, and I got my last four. See, that's more like it. Now I don't have to worry. By doing this um, twice, I got eight of my 12 dice, and the timer's up. You don't even get to finish timer. Sorry. And now uh, I've got a little bit of time. And what do I want to do? Oh, and then I just got another lock. Now, I could actually do this action three times. I mean, you may have noticed I had the unlikely shot that also lets me shoot three times, but I can only do this once, and all three shots have to be in different rooms, which is why this is easier, only taking two dice. This is harder, but much more useful. All righty, so let's see. What do I want? So I know... I'm going to charge, and that's going to be that. That's going to finish this room. This room's finished. And then I've got the move from the stems. That's going to get me there. At which point, I'll probably just go kapow, 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 start shooting there. All right, so I do need one more move to get over here. So let's just go on ahead and take these. And then that gives me two more. And what am I going to do with these two? I'm not going to do anything. But that's okay. So, that's it. I am done. Now, let's start the action. First of all, I will use my preset charge. And uh, because of my rabbit's feet, I can do things out of order. I'll punch, and then I'll move, which normally you cannot do. Then, 
I, let's see, I could shoot in here, but there's only um, two, oh, what do you call it? Um, you know, there's only two guys I could shoot over here. Although this is a tough guy. I need to do two hits to him. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's go on ahead and do my first. See what sticks. Pow, 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 pow. And that's one, two, three, two. If you only do one point of damage, you can just put a little dot. And then, but it's okay, because I just did the second point of damage. Boom. So that's that. Now, let's go on ahead and just use this dash to come in here. Then let's use the other pow, 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 pow to shoot into the next room and uh, take out the big guy. That's one, two, three. So now there's just him. And then let's go on ahead and use my item to move in here. Okay, so I've been in this room now. I've been in that room now. Um, and when I was in this room, unfortunately, I had not taken out as yet all yellows and greens. As you can see, there's still these two. I, mean, I might have a chance to make it back here again if I were thinking about points. All right, so that was that easy. P so I ended up there, and that was the end of round three. Yes, round three. And so at the end of the round, we check. Hey, look, I got another loot and another loot because I cleared out both those rooms. I could take these as prestige, or I could take them as other things. And now i got to ask myself, do I feel lucky? Do I think I can make it up here and beat the boss too? Because, I mean, I've got this. All I gotta do is just take this guy out and I will have gotten all the loot. So I've totally won. So now I'm just playing for points. So to beat Don Zeman, I've got to, well, first of all, I gotta get up here, which means I gotta take out this yellow. And then to beat him, I have to take out his grunt and I have to take him out. And by the time I get here, I've already taken out all the other decoys that could have been him, so I know it's him. So all i got to do is get up here and do five points of damage. And remember, I could do a bunch of them by shooting into the room before I move up. So I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and finish this. All righty. So with that in mind, and uh, yeah, yeah, go on ahead. Beep, 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 beep. All right, stop. Okay, so um, we're, we're having one last flashback. It's the moment where I feel like, okay, I've done enough damage. I could get out of here. But then I think back to what uh, the Dawn did to me, and I'm like, no, I'm not leaving. Um, I'm going to take him out tonight. And so here's my flashback, which then reminds me that, hey, I had some more recon. I had another prestige, which, remember, I could just take this and put this directly into points, which, you know, I'd care more about. If I get one prestige, I get nothing. If I get two prestige, it's one point. If I get three prestige, it's two. If I get one, two, three, four, five, six prestige, it's 11 points, because you cross them out and you take... And the same is true if you get enough training to work that meter up. So anyway, though, so um, what am I going to do? Now, I need to move in here. I need to ultimately do five points of damage. And I need to take this feller out, or else I cannot move up here. Because I do have an evade, but it's only evade shooters. It's not evade him. Nor do I have... There are moves like... Um, oh, Jen has one. Or you know her character. She could do running... Sh she has running shoes. If she activates this, she gets to do a jump. A jump means you actually... Instead of just moving from one room to the next, you basically skip a room, including ignoring anybody in there, because you just kind of jump through it, and you can move two rooms in one. So that's like an ability that Jen has, whereas I have evade. But anyway, so I am going to need one move. I'm going to need one or uh, one hit. And then in here, I'm going to need one, two... How many hit points he has? He has four. So I need five, six points of damage, and one move. And I will win this. So, with all of this in mind, let's go on ahead and um, use the... Oh, what do you call it? The knuckles. The, this knuckle plus this knuckle. I'll combine them to, once again, lock in that charge so I do not have to worry about rolling that. So that's fine. And then see, I've got a, 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 a... Ah, shoot. I'm sorry. It's not the Knuckles. It's the Recon. The Recon. Um, the Recon plus this Recon. I will combine these two. Oh, shoot. Have I been doing this? I often get these mixed up. The Knuckles let you buy more items. And it says it right here. A Knuckle lets you uh, unlock a charge. The Recons, though, they use these little chevrons to indicate. And I keep mixing it up. because The chevrons kind of look like the Recon, but I've talked to them. They're, they're actually kind of doing redoing some... Uh, um, some more graphic design. The game is not finished. Again, hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go check out the uh, Kickstarter page. So anyway, so I use that recon plus that recon to locate my charge. So I've got my lock plus the one damage, which can be done against this. Because remember, thanks to the rabbit's feet, I could hit him and then get in here. But that's the problem. If I'm in here, I can't shoot the boss. I need to shoot in here. I just need to do see what hits twice, take out everybody. And then I don't even need to go in here. I just need to do shoot five points of damage in there. So I don't even need to take this guy out. 
I've really got this. So again, now I'm just playing for points, trying to take out as many people as I can. I've left these two alive. Um, and um, that's the other thing too. If I take out the boss and then I could make it all the way back to this room, I could get three more points. But that is not happening. I mean, I, maybe it could if I really um, pushed it, but that seems a bit unlikely. So, and now here's the deal. Instead of locking in the charge with those two recon, I could lock in the see what sticks. But the problem with that is if I do that, I can't do it more than, I, I can't put dice on it. I'd get one of this, and that would be three of the five damage, and then I'd have to get two fires up in there. So I think, I mean, I've been really successful at just, you know, getting all the dice, and it's been dangerous. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm cheating a little bit because I am actually pausing and taking the time to talk to you, but I mean, uh, you know, it, it had, it, you know, it could blow up in my face, but it's worked so far, so I think I'm just going to use this twice to shoot all in there, and that's really all I need to do. If I just shoot, because all of his, uh, body doubles are gone, then, what the heck, let's just go on ahead and take a prestige. Why not? Um, because I'm going to get another one, which means I'll score a point for having gotten this boss as well. Oh, I forgot. Am I thinking, what prestige did I get from these? Because I finished those. Did I buy more stuff? I don't think I did. So what the heck, we'll just say I took both of those as prestige, I took this as prestige, and now I can purchase one thing, um, which I guess will just be another move, just in case. Alrighty, so there we go. So that's it. We're ready for the final run. Got my four dice. If I just activate this twice, I win. So I'm not too terribly worried. Here we go. Alrighty, there's that I need. Oh, and, um, oh dear. Okay, and, okay, actually, two lock is bad, so I'm going to do this so I can get these back, and now I'm rolling two more, and all of a sudden, it, oh, I'm just one more, and so, so there's the punch, and, okay, boom, I got one, yay, I get four more, that was a little scary, I took a point of damage, and, all right, I need one more, there's the knife that, I need um, the walk, and the, or no, I need a, I need a damage again, all right, I got it, so that's the second one, and now I get these three dice, time is up, again, as long as I Pull. I mean, once the timer's out, you can keep going. You just can't get anything else out of the uh, the pool. So I've still got these, and I let's go on ahead and just. Uh, right now, I've got two. I was just trying to get another move in case I wanted to move somewhere. Um, bop it bop, bop it bop, bop it bop. Because uh, I've got one. I mean, there's two running men. There we go. So I've got a dash. All right. So, and that's it. So I am done. This is going to succeed. Although, again, I might have made a few mistakes here or there. Klingon subtitles will straighten that out. But let's go. First of all, let's go pow, pow, pow. Um, three shots. So that's one. And then um, now he has his, uh, the bosses always have, where is it? Oh, it's over here. Their own hit point meter. So one took out him, his, his bodyguard. And now. Boom, boom. And you can see, as part of setup, I marked the target I have to hit. So, boom, boom. I've hit him twice. And then I go again and go, boom, boom, boom. He's toast. And that means he will score me five points, the next one, plus five for actually taking him out. So, I score ten points off of him. And um, then I, I did take one point of damage, and I asked for a roll. And now I've got to move, but I never took this guy out. So, I can't move anywhere. So, it's it kind of... Oh! Oh no. Oh no. I forgot. I was so cavalier. I forgot. I need to take this guy out. Oh no, I don't. I don't. I, I was going to take him out so I could get the diamond, but remember, there are two ways to win. Get all the loot, which I didn't get this because I didn't take him out, or beat the boss and half of his minions. I have taken out over half of his minions. So I got the win. I'm not going to use these walk, and um, that's it. Now, did I actually succeed? Yes. What are my points? If I were playing multiplayer, uh, I didn't complete this. I did complete this, which was six. Six plus um, two for the two prestige I got. Eight plus um, ten more. So that's 18. But now here's the interesting thing. Um, you have to get out. And what you do is, as part of the final score tally, whatever room you're in, you have to be able to trace a path back to the start. And for every room you go through, as you imagine, trying to leave, where there are still bad guys alive, you lose a point. So here I am. I, I forget what I said. Did I have 18? Unfortunately, there's still one here, so I've lost a point. And then as I work my way out, these guys hassle me on the way out, so I lose. So I lost two points for my final score by not completely clearing a trail. Because I skipped this room, 
uh, and didn't take them out, I was going to lose a point no matter what. Now, again, playing solo, you're really playing for the win, but then you're trying to beat your best score, and I've lost track. What did I have? I had 10 for him, 11, 12, plus 6, that's 18, um, 17, 16 points, and... Don Zeman is no more. Uh, he's still got a few thugs left around who will tell the tale of the night that Johnny Silverhand came to the pool hall and got his vengeance. Uh, in a big, fat roll and fight. And that is the preview, folks. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.